business, or, and, and I, I think from what you were saying, you, you speak to business leaders typically. What do you think makes the difference between people who kind of take this advice to heart and make changes within their company, and people who, you know, don't? Um, is it, uh, is it, do you have to charge them a lot of money to make them do something, or what? Listen, you know, it is, it is hard to, uh, change is hard. And hard change is really hard. So there are a lot of ingrained behaviors that we're talking about here. Uh, it is very easy, and, and we fall into that trap of, of saying what we do instead of why we do it. Uh, it is often easier to deal with broken systems in your company than to take the, the take go through the pain of what it will take to change them. So we, we grind on because we think we'll have some time later on. And so it's a question of, you know, I think of myself uh, for that exact reason as, as a player coach instead of a coach. Because I found that when, when, when I'm just coaching somebody, in between the time that we speak, nothing happens. Uh, not because they don't have the best of intentions to, to make change, but change is hard and they have a, a a job that's eating up every waking moment and probably some of the time that they should be sleeping. So I think what, what I felt when I was running my business is that you, we all as entrepreneurs, we, we really need somebody who can think like a business owner, but we really can't afford to pay another business owner. And so I think there's moments in time in, in a business where a business owner needs uh, an ear to talk to, uh, and, and also need somebody who's willing to roll up their sleeves and help them move the boulder up the hill. Not forever, but for a period of time to get some of those things done. And then I think the momentum that starts to come out of getting some of those things that just seem like too much of a headache done uh, starts to take control of itself. But I, I think, you know, the same reason that people don't go to the gym as often as they want, there needs to be you know, it takes 21 days to make a new habit and that type of thing. So it, it needs a little bit of momentum to start to get to work out muscles that, that you're otherwise not going to work out. To go on a few sales calls where you don't try to, you know, turn it around. To think about, you know, and, and more than anything else, um, I think that what I provide is, is perspective. I think the hardest thing is, is that, you, you know, you're stuck inside the bottle, like I said before. Uh, and so I think every business owner, uh, that it's very true as an entrepreneur that it is lonely at the top. That you really can't, there's not a lot of people that you could talk about the stresses and the fears. You don't want to seem weak. Uh, you don't want to talk about the things that you really, that might be really holding you back that are personal. Um, and I think that there's a great need to, to vent that out and to have somebody who's willing to in a, in a safe, comfortable place hold up that mirror and tell you, you know, you've been telling me this for a month and a half now and nothing's happened, why? And what it often comes out is it's, you know, there's a, there's a fear or a block or something that, that's making them not do it. Some question about your own business. So, <clears throat> how did you, you said you had a four year period where you felt like doing it right. That was in my old business. In your old business, right. So how did you overcome that? I reached out to, uh, a consultant at the time, who's still, uh, you know, one of my closest friends and mentors, um, and and need, I needed somebody to to, to tell to tell me the truth. I needed somebody. You know, we uh, quick example. We had an office in Chicago that never made a dime. Didn't lose any money, but didn't make any money. And we talked about it for months and months and months. And I said, if you know, we hire a new salesperson, and now it's going to break through, and this and that, and I went and I had a thousand stories. And finally, you know, I took somebody to say to me, "We've been talking about this business, this, this office in Chicago for six months. Shoot it in the head, and let's let's get on with it." That's exactly what he said. So you couldn't, given your experience and number of years, you, were, you just couldn't get yourself to that point of making that. I decision. I was too. You know, when, when, when you're inside the bottle, when you're inside the business, I wanted that office to work. 
That was something that I had put a lot of energy into. And I couldn't see that there were some fundamental reasons why that office was never going to work. But did you intuitively know that it wasn't working for you? Or you thought that somehow it's going to work? I thought that it was we were one big client or <clears throat> one lucky moment away from, from getting that going again. So it wasn't fear of, oh, if I shut that down, I fail. I had, I had some of that. There were, you know, when I thought back about the business, I, I, if I had to do it all over again, I would have shut every office down except for two that were wildly profitable. Mm -hmm. But that would have looked to the industry, or and this is what I thought, I don't think this is actually true, but at the time I, I felt that if I had shut every office down except two, people would have saw that as, a, as weakness. So I was so concerned about what our competitors thought and what the industry was going to say and what was going to happen in an industry function that I actually didn't do what was best for the business at the time until I finally said, you know what, I don't care what our competitors do. They actually have no clue. And I had to do what fit our business. And what finally turned the tide is that I said to myself, what do we do better than anybody else? And it was that our service was really better than anybody else's. And, and because of that, I was never going to be able to compete effectively on price. 